No, I was blowing the dirt off of it. These are the tools you'll need. Depending on your machine, got a 14 millimeter T handle, a big fat boy blade, and a little boy blade. Depending on what you're riding, might be on KYB, might be on WP. Today, Honda, we run Showa. So um, I'm gonna go over Showa clickers. Um, hear a lot that people want testing content. So um, I'm gonna do that. All right, first things first. If you're not doing this, you probably should, unless you're on an air fork. Go over what the clickers are, um, just because I want to make some reference to some clickers, and then you can actually know what I'm talking about instead of hearing me talk about high speed, low speed, rebound, all that stuff. So first thing you're going to see on your fork that I really want to point out is uh, this bleed screw. If you're not bleeding your forks like every ride day, you probably should be doing that. So I just have one session. You might hear like a little pfft. Uh, yep, a little pfft. So typically, um, I'll do one session, bleed them. Usually kind of good for the rest of the day. But top one, on the show of fork, bleeder. Be careful if you haven't bled that thing in a while. You could uh, launch. All right, so starting on the fork, I got the little blade here. This guy right here, this is your compression adjuster. Shock, you've got high speed, low speed compression. Uh, some of the KYB forks have a high speed, low speed compression, but the Showa fork here just has a compression adjuster on the top. So when you think about uh, the fork actually compressing, if you make this adjuster stiffer or tighter, you're gonna close off more oil. So the fork is actually gonna move slower on compression. And then vice versa, if you make it softer, or pull the needle back, there's gonna be more oil flow. So you're gonna have less uh, dampening control. So you should move quicker on compression. If you're having trouble with the bike just collapsing, especially the fork, good adjustment in on the clicker. If you're getting a lot of like really bad uh, hand feel kind of tightness um, out on the compression adjuster sometimes helps. So I, I use the compression adjuster a lot, track to track especially, uh, you know, here in Oklahoma. We'll ride some harder tracks, some really soft tracks, so that's a really good go-to adjuster. Um, say you're going from like a really hard pack track to a really soft, loamy track, you can just click that thing in. And when I say click it in, righty tighty, lefty loosey, right, you're making it go in. So you've got a needle and it's basically just closing off um, an orifice and creating more resistance for the oil to go through. So um, going in on the adjuster, oil restriction, going out on the adjuster, lefty-loosey, less restriction, more oil flow, more movement. So moving to the rebound adjuster on the fork here on the bottom. Um, this one can be a little bit tricky just because uh, you've, you're kind of like down here in this weird position. It's kind of hard to get to, especially if you've got a discard cover. Same concept though, restricting oil, um, or creating more flow depending on which way you uh, move the adjuster. On the rebound side though, it's when the fork is going to extension. So you've gone through compression in the stroke and then all of a sudden the oil has to move back through all these shims on the return. So if you tighten the adjuster, you're gonna have uh, more restriction, therefore a slower rebound. So. You punch it into a braking bump, compression, 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 you start uh, a return, rebound, rebound, rebound. So the tighter you go on that, the slower it's gonna return. The more open you go on that, the faster it's gonna return. So moving to the shock here, we'll just go straight to the rebound adjuster. Sometimes you need the big blade just cause it's a little funky to get to. Um, especially on the stand. Some of you might have to actually take the bike off the stand to get to the rebound adjuster. Uh, but same concept right here. Yeah, see like this, I, I can't even get, uh, because of the linkage, the pull rod, the bike actually kind of needs to be off the stand for me to get to it. Um, I've got a different adjuster on here, um, but basic stock components, a different adjuster. I've got the 18 mil uh, shock shaft on here right now. So a um, little bit different parts, but 
for the most part, very stock motorcycle. Same concept as I mentioned on the fork as far as the rebound. Shocks going in, compression, compression, compression. Rear starts to extend, that's rebound. If you have your, a, a big problem with, say, you're um, coming into the turn and you just feel like the wheel is just trying to drop out on you like crazy, um, just go in and click it in a couple and see how that reacts. Um, again, righty tighty is gonna make it slower on rebound. Um, Lefty Lucy is gonna make it looser. So um, I feel the Honda typically likes a faster rebound. I think our rebound setting um, on the race team is on the fast side. Um, and I think if you're a faster rider, you probably want faster rebound. It's just, you're hitting the bumps at a really high frequency, right? So you need that return and the ability for it to keep up. So if you're a fast rider, I think typically faster rebound. Um, but when I was racing, it was kind of like all slow rebound. Fast, faster guys wanted slow rebound, kept their rear down. Um, it's kind of changed in style, I'd say, over the years. I would say if you're fighting like a lot of harsh traction feel too, um, you can open the rebound clicker and it should move a little bit quicker and kind of follow the ground better, allow you to drive a little bit better. Compression adjuster, a little different. So you got your low speed compression here in the middle. Righty tidy, lefty loosey. Um, same thing as we talked about with the fork. You know, say you're, you're exiting a turn and the rear is just sinking on you really bad. Um, that means your compression is just too soft. So try to click that low speed adjuster in just to catch it and you should have a slower compression feel. It's gonna keep you from just dropping and dragging the fender. Um, if you're new to this or haven't played with clickers very much, you might have to like really crank it. Four clicks um, would probably be a good place to start um, to feel. Just cause it's, it's uh, you know, the more experience you get, the, the more sensitive you become, I'd say. But if you've never experienced it, you might go bigger just to see what it does. High speed adjuster is this 14 mil. It's kind of the same concept, right? But you're gonna go in like sixths or eighths, quarters or halves. So um, I've got a line here, you can do this, just like a little paint pen. Um, I'm at the adjustment they sent me with. So, but if I wanna go, if I want a lot of times the high speed adjuster can make it a little bit harsh if it's too stiff. So I can just go out, say, Let's just go out like a sixth or, yeah, I'll go a fourth, quarter, quarter turnout. So you can see that how the line moved. That was base, now we're a quarter turnout. And that should give me a little bit of a softer, freer feeling, um, but I am gonna squat more, um, especially on like high frequency bumps, high shaft speed. Um, it should move a little bit easier. So, um, go ahead and put that back. Another big thing is keep track of your clickers. Make sure you know, hey, I went two out this way, two in. Good to have a little notebook just to kind of uh, think about what you did. That way you don't get super lost. And this forks on 12, that forks on 10. You know, it's easy to get, get lost with those things. So the difference in high speed, low speed compression would be your low speed compression is, is kind of like a lo lower shaft speed, right? So, um, Say you're going up a jump face and it's you know just a kind of a slow, gradual fall, that's gonna be more of your low speed compression where your high speed is gonna be a lot of uh, shaft speed. So um, different ways to think about it. And this spring type adjuster is really gonna affect height. I don't use it a ton. It's more for me like a comfort thing if I need different height or, um, or if it feels just too tight for me in the rear, I can open that up and maybe go in on a low speed. Um, but this bike, I mean, I've got some different components in it, but it is like very, very stock. Um, only thing I've really gotten here is I've got a different compression adjuster and then also um, different shock shaft. So um, other than that, I mean, it is stock components. So a lot of people will always ask me like, dude, your bike must be so good. I'm like, dude, it's basically stock. So the clicker adjustments, everything that I'm saying is, is gonna apply to your bike as well. Yeah, the biggest thing I could say is 
if you've never played with it, just go play with it. Write down what each adjuster does and um, go to a bumpy part of the track and just start messing around. Um, and then just take that information and go from there. It's, it's not about exactly finding the perfect clicker number. You know, I know some people have a sag number and then, you know, you need your, this clicker here, this clicker there. Just, it's about what you feel. That's the only right answer. That's kind of been my slogan over the last few years. The only answer that's right is the one that works. Joe and Jet, they're like on two different spectrums. Uh, they're both winning races. So um, find what works for you. And this is the best way to do it. Just go play with your clickers on the track so you can feel what you want. This also helps you too. Say you're sending your suspension to like REP or uh, factory connection or something like that. You can call them and say, hey, this is what I'm feeling. You know, when I go in with this clicker, it does this. When I go out with this clicker, it does that. And then once they have your suspension, they can see where your clickers are. And that gives them a rough idea of like what, what to do, where to go. Because suspension settings are like, there's a million ways to do it, right? So the more information you can give them, the better off they will be at getting your first setting right. So really, that's, uh, that's your clickers. Did we get it? Gosh, I'm sweaty. Yeah, I was, I was in it. I was in the zone. There's, there's a big tree here. Um, something that I forgot what the saying was. Your neck of the woods. Is that what it is? Take these woods where your clicks, where your... If you haven't played with it... <laughs> I was, with it. I was, yeah. If you're, if... How do I rephrase that? I don't know. You phrased it perfectly. Yeah. It's definitely ending up somewhere on the internet. <laughs>